of Gahirin Arjuna how he is in a very difficult situation. Who's translating? Huh? Everybody continue? Do you usually get questions? Conscious, more consciousness than the plants. 
the plants, the trees and so on, they are conscious, but their consciousness is restricted by the body which they are in. So, the plants are provided as proper food for the human body, not only for the humans, plants are also there for the animals, just like if you try to grow rice, the birds will all come and they will eat it. I was in my poor during the COVID and we had some land there and the devotee tried to grow rice. Oh, I never seen so many birds before. All the birds came every day to have a big feast on the rice because we were growing it without using any chemicals. We wanted to grow it purely, but because there were no chemicals, the birds all knew, oh, this, this is a good rice, you can have this. And they came, so many birds, all different sizes and colors and varieties, all came and they enjoyed the rice. <laughs> we did not have this much rice. <laughs> so, anyway, the birds, they have to eat, we also have to eat, right? Nature provides for the birds, and nature also provides for human beings. Of course, we have to cultivate them, we do the work. We cultivate the land, and we grow the plants, and so on, and we produce food. And that food is grains, vegetables, they are proper food for the human you could say we are killing, but it's a different violence from the people who kill the animals. You kill an animal, it's not a very pleasant business. The animals are crying, and they try to run away, and there's so much blood everywhere. It's a very disgusting business. If you go to the slaughterhouse and see them killing animals, you will not think about eating meat for some time. So, that is violence, unnecessary violence. But to take the plants, to kill the plants, we don't really kill them, we wait till they're ready to harvest. Then they're going to die, they're near to death at that point. And that's when they provide the food for the people. Not only for the people, for the animals also. So, violence can be used in the proper way. Just like in the Manu Samhita, Manu Samhita is a law book for mankind. It describes that a person who is a murderer, he should be hanged, he should be killed. If he has killed someone, then he should be killed. So that is proper violence. You can say, oh, that's violence. But that is proper violence. Someone has killed someone, he should be punished. If he is not punished, then in the next life, he will suffer very much. He will get a very bad birth in the next life. So the punishment takes away the reaction of his sin and allows him to progress. So the punishment which he receives is actually good for his progress. Another kind of violence which is necessary Sometimes there is uh, a disturbance within the society. The law and order may be disturbed by all the disturbance in the society. People protesting and so on, revolting. So sometimes the government will send in the military to restore law and order. So that is proper use of violence. 
So violence is not a bad thing if it's used properly. So here Kurukshetra, Arjuna had been brought by the, with the Pandavas, they had come there to fight the sons of Dhritarashtra. And both the Kauravas and the Pandavas had got their supporters. The Kauravas, the sons of Dhritarashtra, had a lot of support. And they had great warriors also, particularly Bhishma and Drona. And the Pandavas, they had a much smaller army. But of course they were also blessed because they were the Pandavas. And they had, most important of all, they had Lord Krishna on their side. Right? Arjuna wanted Krishna to be on his side. Duryodhana, he was happy to get Krishna's army. But Arjuna wanted Krishna. Even though Krishna said, I'm not going to fight. But Arjuna just wanted to have Krishna with me. So that was in the favor of the Pandavas. There were other factors which were also favoring the Pandavas. Although their army was much smaller, they were blessed to have Lord Krishna and they were blessed also that the battle was taking place at Kurukshetra, which is the holy place. The Bhagavad Gita begins, Dharma Chitri Kurukshetri. The Kurukshetra is a place of Dharma, it's a place of religiosity. And they have chosen to go there to settle the dispute. The Pandavas and the Kuravas, they had always great difficulty to cooperate with each other. There was a lot of tension between the two families. Although they are actually one family, they were made into two. The Pandavas are also Kuravas. The Pandavas were also, they were the sons of Pandu, and Pandu was the brother of Dhritarashtra. So the Pandavas were also Kuravas, but Dhritarashtra separated the Pandavas and the Kuravas, his own sons. In the very first verse, Dhritarashtra said, What did my sons and the sons of Pandu do? being desirous to fight. So, they made a distinction between his sons and the sons of Pandu. Although they are one family, they separated. Why? Because of the desire for power. Dhritarashtra was actually the eldest son. He was the eldest son, but he was born blind. So because he was born blind, he could not be the king. So then the second son became the king. The second son was Pandu. And Pandu had his five sons, the Pandavas. But then Maharaj Pandu died. He died prematurely, very young. His children, the Pandavas, were still very young. So when Pandu died, then there was nobody else to be the king except Dhritarashtra. And Dhritarashtra is blind, but anyway, there's nobody else, so he has to be the king. But he has a hundred sons, and naturally, he wanted the best for his sons. This is the bodily conception of life. We think about myself, we think I am the body, and we think my children, they are extensions of my body. We have so much affection for our own children. Right? Prabhupada said, a woman will love all children, but she has a special love for her own children. And you see Dhritarashtra, 
Dhritarashtra, although he is blind, he has so much love for his sons and he does not have any feeling for the Pandavas. Although they are his nephews, although Dhritarashtra is their guardian, their uncle, he is meant to take care of them, but he wants to get rid of them. And that's why they wanted the battle of Kurukshetra. They thought that we have the battle of Kurukshetra, then surely we can kill the Pandavas. We can defeat them in battle. Because we have so many great fighters on our side. So we will kill all the Pandavas in the battle. This was the thing, and Dhritarashtra wanted this. So it came to the day of the battle and Arjuna comes into the middle of the battlefield and he saw, he asked Lord Krishna is driving the chariot for Arjuna. Lord Krishna is known as Bhakta Sarati, the chariot driver of Arjuna. Arjuna is Bhakta, son of Gita. So Lord Krishna is driving the chariot Arjuna is telling him, take my chariot into the middle of the battlefield. I want to see all the people here. So Lord Krishna is driving, yes, and he takes it right in front of Bhishma and Drona. And Arjuna sees these people and he says, these people are worthy of my worship. A grandfather, he worship grandfather, Bhishma. We worship our teacher. Drona was the teacher. He had taught Arjuna. He had blessed Arjuna that he would be the greatest archer in the world. He had blessed Arjuna. All he was, Arjuna was the, the favorite student of Drona. So Arjuna sees all these people how can I fight these people? They are worthy of my worship. And look, he says to Krishna, You are Madhusudana. You are the killer of the demon Madhu. But I will be Dronathara and Bhishmathara. I will be the killer of Bhishma and Drona. That is not very good. You are Madhusudana, the killer of a demon Madhu, but I'll be Dronadana, Vishmadana. That's not, I don't want to be that. I get the name of the killer of my grandfather, the killer of my teacher. That will be terrible. That will be a disgrace. So Arjuna is worried that, you know, this is not right. That I'm going to fight. I'm going to so many people and all of these people that my relatives is not good and very Arjuna's thinking it's sinful if I will fight and kill all these people. So Arjuna is thinking what to do, what should I do? He does not just do it. You know that they have that thing naturally just do it, right? That is Maya. You do it without thinking. If you do something without thinking, that is not good. Sometimes people do things very quickly. They'll do it without thinking about it. And then after they've done it, then they regret it. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, I don't know why I did that. We, we didn't think about it carefully. So it's very important not to just be controlled by the mind and senses. Just like sometimes you see something and you think, Oh, that looks good! And you take it and you eat it and now you eat it. Oh, I shouldn't have eaten this. You know, we do things like that. We often do things 
talk simply without thinking about it. But Arjuna is a very thoughtful person. He is very careful to think what he is doing. And that is the Prabhupada said, this is the nature of a devotee. A devotee has good qualities. One who is a devotee is blessed by all the demigods to have good qualities. But one who is not a devotee, he doesn't really have any good qualities. Even though he may be well educated, he may be a big scholar, he may be a rich man, he may be famous, whatever, but if he is not a devotee, does not have any good quality because he's under the material energy. If he is not a devotee, then he's under the control of the Maya, the modes of nature. Sometimes Tamagot, sometimes Rajas, sometimes Sambhagot. But the modes of nature People in the material world do not understand how they are controlled by the material nature. We were talking today in Kuala Lumpur in the morning class. We were talking about it was about Haranya Kashipu. How Haranya Kashipu wanted to get the position of Lord Brahma. Haranya Kashipu was doing austerity. He was doing tapasya. So we may think, oh, that's very good to do tapasya. But he's a demon. And he was doing tapasya to get power to do harm to others. So some people, they do austerity just to give trouble to others. Arjuna is a devotee, however. He has good qualities. He doesn't want to do harm to others. He is very compassionate thoughtful and he thinks how to help them. He's thinking how can I benefit these people. <coughs> so that is the nature of a devotee. A devotee cares about other people. Materialistic people who are not devotees are very selfish. They're very selfish. They only care about their own self. They think, what will I get? How much will you give me? What will you do for me? They don't care about others. They only think about their own self. But a devotee is not selfish. A devotee is selfless. He doesn't think about his own self, he thinks about <coughs> others. And that's the nature of a devotee. The devotee is blessed with good qualities because they've taken shelter of Lord Krishna. And because they've taken shelter of Lord Krishna, all the demigods bestow their blessings on the devotee. One who is a devotee gets the blessing of all the demigods. And one who is not a devotee, one who is not surrendered, they are under the control of the material energy, Maya. Right? So we have, a, we have to choose. We have that independence. We have free will. Our free will is to choose surrender to Krishna or surrender to Maya. When the 
common people, materialistic people, they surrender to Maya. Because they are thinking, I am the body. They are thinking, I want to enjoy. They are thinking, I am mine. This is mine. This is belong to me. She is mine. Right? You are thinking like that. This is the bodily conception of life. But the devotee understands everything belongs to Krishna. And we should use everything for Krishna's service. And in this way, the devotee surrenders to Krishna. And when he surrenders to Krishna, then all the demigods are very throw their blessings on the devotee. So all the good qualities are there in the character of a devotee. But somebody else who is not a devotee, they may be very pious, they may be good, maintain their family, they may be gyanis, they may be scholars, a lot of knowledge, but if they're not devotee, then they're under the control of the material energy, prakriti. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, Devi Esha Dunamayi Mama Maya Duradhyaya. So this, this, this Maya, this Krishna said, my Maya. My Maya is very difficult to overcome because it's Krishna's energy. You want to overcome Maya? You try to fight it yourself? Very difficult. But, Mameva ye prapajante mayam itam tarantite. If someone surrenders to Krishna, then he can easily cross over. Why? Because they've surrendered to Krishna. And that Maya is under Krishna's control. So Krishna orders Maya, release that devotee. He's my devotee. Release him. So this is how it works. Just like I remember we used to go to, to take apples from someone's orchard. You know, they grow apples in the orchard and we would go to the people's orchard to pick apples. But the man who had the orchard had a dog and the dog would see us going picking apples. The dog would come running. The dog would say, these are my apples. Why are you coming here? And we took, what, what would we do? We climb the tree and the dog is barking. Brrr, give me my apples. The dog is barking. We don't have to get free. We, we have to wait for the owner of the dog to come. And when the owner of the dog comes, then he gets the dog under his control. And then we can come down the tree and go away. So the same way, Maya is like that. Maya is like the dog. Krishna is the controller of that. And he gets us, he can let us free. But we have to surrender to Krishna. And then it's very easy. And how to surrender? We have to do Krishna. Begins by chanting the holy name. Taking up Krishna consciousness begins start to chant the Maha Mantra. We awaken the spiritual energy. Everything is there in the Holy Name. The Holy Name is Krishna. And this is the Holy Name week, right? This is the Holy Name week. We've been having programs all week talking about the glories of the Holy Name. All over the world, the devotees are trying to do special efforts 
to increase the glory, to increase the people, to let people know about the holy name. Just two days ago we had Bhadra Purnima. Bhadra Purnima is a special day, it's mentioned that if we give someone a set of Srimad Bhagavatam on the day of Bhadra Purnima, then you get to go back to Godhead. So we were distributing sets of Bhagavatams and we were encouraging people also take a set of Bhagavatams and distribute it or you can keep it for yourself if you don't have one. And we were, we were celebrating like that, getting people to, to, to read the books, to, to know about the Bhagavatam about Krishna and we were encouraging the devotees to do more Kirtan, how do you know Saint Kirtan to do Saint Kirtan and let people hear the holy name because this is a holy name week every week is a holy name week but especially this week we want, they wanted to make special efforts to try to give the holy name to people who never heard the holy name. So, is it Nam Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vibraha Purna Shiva Niti Manto Bina Nam Nama Namano The holy name of Krishna is described as Chintamani. It's a wish fulfilling touchstone. It fulfills all of our desires. You have any, any desires? Just a few, right? Some desires. Yeah, of course. We all have desires, all of us. But this holy name, Nam Chintamani, it will fulfill all of our spiritual desires. And when you satisfy your spiritual desires, all your material desires will be forgotten. You give them all because we'll be so satisfied with our spiritual desires. So the holy name is like that. It is said, not a Kali Yuga, Kali 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 Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar. In the Kali Yuga, Lord Krishna comes in the form as his holy name. So we've been chanting, we're doing more chanting, we're encouraging people to chant. We had our convention last week, we did a big convention there and down in Johor. Over a thousand devotees came to Pai. And then we had big programs also in Kabbalah Lumpur. Jaipanjaka Swami was there. He was also giving initiation and awarding shelter to many souls, encouraging them in the chanting of the holy name. We had the disappearance of Haridas Thakur, and we had the appearance day of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and we had the day in which Prabhupada to Sanyas, the Vishwaru Mahamsa, the Bhadra Purnima. So, Tomorrow is Radhi Antra also at Taman Santosa and that will mark like the end of the Lord, the Holy Name week with the Radhi Antra tomorrow. So we encourage all of you to come. If you can, take part in the Radhi Antra, check the Holy Name and dance and experience the bliss of the Holy Name in the association of many good needs. Okay, are there any questions? Anybody? Yes, Prabhu.
thereby Mahamantra doesn't have the Om Shabha. Why not?
to Lord Krishna is always given respect by great saintly persons and such people are actually worshipable by the demigods. So the demigods they worship the pure devotees. And that's why we give the blessings on them. Because they, they know these are great souls. These, these souls who have no material desires. They think, oh they're very great so give them my blessings. Bless them.
Any other 